So I'm uh, Elisa Elzaker. I'm a part of the microbiology group uh, and the architectural engineering group at the Vrije Universiteit Brussel. Um, and current practices in the construction sector are characterized by a linear use and disposal of materials at the end of uh, the cycle, making that the building industry in Europe accounts for about half of all our extracted materials and energy consumption, and for about a third of our water consumption and waste generation. So facing those environmental damages, due to the extraction of the resources and the discard of the materials at the end of life, multiple sectors already started a transition towards uh, closed loop and bio-based materials inspired by natural processes. And instead of extracting those uh, raw resources that would generate future waste, biological materials can be grown based on agricultural uh, residue fibers so in that sense, fungal materials consist of natural fibers, which are bound together by mycelium. And mycelium is the root structure of fungi. So that way, organic waste streams from the wood or the agricultural industries can be valorized, while at the same time creating a solid material that is biodegradable at the end of its life cycle. And the versatility and the high potential of mycelium materials have over the past years uh, already led to a broad spectrum of um, novel applications. But due to its novelty, there is still a gap between the vision of using these uh, materials in architectural applications and uh, the actual commercialization of uh, bulk materials. So most of the projects that you see here are still demonstrator uh, or proof of concept. And so this is due to the fact that the properties and also the applicability of the composite depends on many factors, such as the type of fungus, the feedstock, uh, the environmental factors, the geometry of the composites, the fabrication method, the drying and the post-treatment technique. So it's already very clear that there are strong interrelationships between all these parameters but at the same time, it's quite a challenging task to evaluate and compare results, uh, also because the role of many factors is still not fully understood. And so from those uh, interrelated parameters, I derived two main research questions during my PhD. The first is um, on how uh, the impact of uh, different components and process parameters can influence the material behavior of mycelium composites. And the second question uh, wants to understand to what extent uh, the uh, implementation of digital tools can facilitate large-scale applications of those composites in the construction sector. So along the way, I unified uh, methods from three dominant perspectives into my research. The impact of different parameters during the fabrication process was evaluated by using their biological, uh, morphological, chemical, mechanical, and also physical properties. And we know that uh, fungal diversity is uh, estimated to consist a few million species. Uh, so given that uh, this is a really large um, phylogenetic diversity, and also because of the already high complexity of the subject, um, I initially decided to focus my research on well-known species, and I found out that about uh, 36 species were described in uh, patents or papers uh, for the material application, and they all belong to the division of Basidiomycota. And since very little was known on the approach to select a species that uh, would be suitable for the material application, I assess different characterization techniques um, because um, to compete with the production of other materials, like for example, uh, plastics or other foams, uh, it was thought that a species should be selected for its fastest growth. Um, but the experiment actually showed that also the morphology of the mycelium 
the way that it degrades lignol cellulose, they all impact the properties of the material. So some species might grow fast, but they don't necessarily uh, grow in a compact or adhesive way. And also the use and the impact of different uh, feedstocks for the fabrication of those materials was hardly characterized so far. So therefore I investigated um, the effect of different types of agricultural byproducts and also different types of fiber processing um, for the material properties. And generally the tested um, conducted with different types of fibers revealed that the mechanical performance of the uh, composite depends more on the fiber condition, so its size or its processing, rather than its chemical composition. Um, I Not only I explored the manufacturing of foam-like material, what you see on the left side image, uh, but also uh, that of uh, particle boards, and they were uh, made by heat pressing the grown composites with a high force. And these panels, they rather have the properties of uh, soft boards. So although the mechanical properties of mycelium composites are not uh, structurally yet, the research showed that um, they can compete or they can at least uh, fulfill the requirement of thermal um, insulation foams and therefore they also have uh, the potential to replace uh, some fossil-based composites. Also a key aspect of improving mechanical properties um, is the implementation of nanoparticles. So two, two core approaches were tested using nanoclay and bacterial cellulose to achieve uh, enhanced properties. Currently, the, the, the mycelium materials are made in molds, but uh, these molds uh, not only restrict the viability of the organism, it also restricts the complexity in terms of geometry and scale. So therefore, a method of uh, robotic fabrication was introduced in order to render the production process more efficient and also increased uh, the industrial potential at the construction scale. We investigated four key developments that lead to the scalability of the fabrication process. Um, and we developed a biological and digital fabrication pipeline for growing large mycelium composite blocks by using on-site uh, wire cutting techniques. Um, in order to make mycelium materials that could act as a, for example, a multifunctional formwork. And at the same time, we also uh, investigated the implementation of uh, self-healing properties of the fungal organism. Additive manufacturing is, is also an increasingly common technology in prototyping architectural elements. And so most 3D printing applications known today they use uh, concrete or plastic as an extrusion material. But in this research, we wanted to test um, this additive manufacturing uh, potential with mycelium materials to achieve more complex uh, shapes uh, that would facilitate the growth of mycelium. Now, the possibilities for the future uh, for future research with mycelium are really endless. We are just at the beginning of uh, this investigation, but I want to highlight uh, three parts of research that are currently ongoing in the VUB. The first one um, is uh, the development of a genetically engineered strain, which um, uh, pure with this done this is done with pure mycelium. Uh, and it could have an industrial relevance for the production of sustainable leather uh, and plastic substitutes. And then the second is that uh, fungi can be seen as one of the most promising decomposer to tackle uh, plastic waste uh, issues. So the implementation of biodegradation of plastic uh, with fungi in material application might also be a promising uh, future part. And then finally, we are also investigating uh, fungi-mediated self-healing of cracks in concrete. So what I presented is uh, quite a disruptive technology that uh, can in the future 
potentially offer alternatives to traditional plastic production or the recycling process. Uh, but there is still a lot of work, uh, especially to find, for example, value change uh, in the market for mycelium materials, uh, but also um, in the development of the process. And that's the reason why we uh, are seeking connections and inspiration from more experienced academic partners and industrial partners in the capture network. Um, and the research um, that um, I'm part of uh, is also uh, yeah, a broader interdisciplinary consortium on biomaterials and bioplastics at the VEB and is largely composed of uh, the microbiology group the uh, physical, uh, the chemistry and the um, uh, polymer sciences and the architectural engineering, in which uh, the team of Evelyn Peters and Nico van den Brande also recently joined uh, the Capture Network. So this is it. Um, I would be happy to uh, yeah, take some questions uh, if there are some. Thank you.